Hello booktube! Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth and it's Friday so it's time for Friday Reads. Well I am uh, getting to film this a little earlier than I sometimes do. I got up super early this morning. We woke up to uh, Emily. We could hear her having a seizure. It was 5 a.m. and so we got up, made sure she was okay. She went back to sleep. I stayed up and I read some and then because she had to sleep a while, um, missed the school bus and so I took her to school. It was a little before noon by the time we finally got out of the house and I thought I well I, I dressed in teacher clothes because I had originally planned to sub for a half a day this afternoon and Katie's middle school that she went to the last three years had called me the last two days to see if I could come in just for the afternoon and I couldn't but I said Friday I can so if something comes up call me Friday so nothing came up I even called them and they're like no we don't need you today and <laughs> so I looked online and there was just nothing that I could get to that I wanted to do except one of Katie's current teachers needed someone for the afternoon but Katie would have had a conniption if I had shown up in her class so I didn't even go there. So I'm home now and uh, I thought I would just tell you what I read this week. Uh, I do have a lot of other videos to do that are related to last year and this this year and all of that stuff. So uh, I'm going to try to make this quick. I finished two books this week. I've still got seven books on my currently reading list. One of those I don't plan to finish because it's the big giant uh, Lonesome Dove um, that I'm reading with the read-along that's hosted by Ange and Elena. But uh, the others I do still hold out some hope that I can finish. Uh, but what I finished already this week out of the nine that I had as of last week is uh, <clears throat> Kingdom Keepers Disney After Dark book one in the Kingdom Keepers series by Ridley Pearson and I have read this before it's been a while and I enjoyed it I didn't remember how it ended at all um, I knew it had something to do uh, with Maleficent and her daughters and all that stuff but uh, I mean that's that's a, a theme of the book but uh, I didn't I couldn't really remember <laughs> <laughs> anything about it. So uh, it is about uh, five Disney hosts. They are actual kids, but the kids were just filmed in order to um, use them as holograms. So because their images are in the parks as hosts, the kids themselves are not allowed to go to Disney without special permission. But all of a sudden they start going to sleep and waking up in the Disney parks as holograms. They're like part hologram and part human. And um, <clears throat> one of the old Imagineers gives them a, a task to do that's kind of dangerous. They're kind of on a quest to save the uh, parks from uh, some of the villains, the, the overtakers, they're called. And so it's just, it's really, uh, it's a good series. It's fun. It has enough of a mix of magical realism with real, uh, real life settings. Uh, I understand that Ridley Pearson did come to Disney several times while he was writing the series, and uh, he he toured around. He was uh, hosted by uh, you know people in charge who had the authority to give him the permission to write about uh, the things that he wrote about, and um, he, he did a great job. I I think it's very well done, and I'm uh, I'm looking forward to moving on with the series now. I've only ever read the first two, so I just decided I would start over. There's seven in the original series. Uh, then I think there's maybe a novella near the end of, uh, like maybe after the seventh one. Then there is a, a spinoff series that has at least three in it. So uh, I probably want to just make my goal to read at least these first seven this year and then move on with the spinoff stuff in the future sometime. So it was fun. <clears throat> Then finally, Lisa, I finally finished. I still got my bookmark. Oh no, it's not a bookmark. That's something I want to read to somebody. Anyway, a little quote there. Um, <clears throat> I have finished Midnight at the Bright Ideas Bookstore by Matthew Sullivan. This was the December pick for Lisa's Buddy Reads. Lisa is from Books and Smiles. And I, I tried to kind of follow some of the comments that people were making. And it looked like a lot of people... Said, well, it said they um, they enjoyed maybe the first half 
Uh oh, I've got a kitty sneaking up behind the camera. I just hope she doesn't knock it down. Um, it looked like most people enjoyed it up to a point, and then they didn't like the ending. So I was a little bit nervous about how I was going to feel about it, but um, I was okay with it. I was very surprised. There was um, there was a lot of shock value, I think, in in how it all came out. Um, it's not a happy book. It is very dark, sad, a bit depressing. The people who are, uh, there's both a suicide and some murders, and those people are not the only victims in the story. Uh, there is just a lot going on, and I said in my Goodreads review, which is pretty short, just that basically, it kind of reminds me of that whole butterfly effect. How one action by someone can then change and basically almost ruin the lives of, of a lot of other people. So it just kind of makes you stop and think, wow, I need to be careful what I do because it could adversely affect other people. So, um, you know, we don't live in a vacuum. We live in a world and we have family and friends and people around us. And what we do can cause consequences for other people. So that's kind of what I got out of it. Uh, it's a very intriguing mystery. And uh, I think it's definitely worth picking up. Um, it's not very long. It's I think it's very easy to read. I originally put it off because I was waiting for the audio. I'm glad that I went ahead and read it in print because there are some clues that she's finding in books that were left by um, by someone, and I don't want to give too much away. Uh, but it, if you like mystery thriller, now I don't know actually if I would call it a thriller. It's more of a depressor, <laughs> but um, it's still... I enjoyed reading it, if that makes any sense. It's a sad and depressing book that I enjoyed reading. Is that weird? I don't usually enjoy sad and depressing books, but I think I got enough profound feelings from it that it made it worth reading. There, I'll leave it at that. Okay, so that's what I finished. The only other books that I made very much progress in, in print, I made some uh, pretty good progress in The Gift by Cecilia Hearn. This is another book that's got some magical realism. It's about a man who is uh, a businessman who's basically too busy, too busy for his family. And um, I'll tell you more about it when I finish it. And then on audio, I have been making some progress in Mess by Barry Yorkrow. A uh, couple times he sort of gets lost in a rabbit hole, and but then he eventually kind of comes back around and makes you understand why he's talking about that subject. Uh, this is basically a memoir about him being a hoarder, and I think it's very interesting. He uh, part of, the, of what I was listening to this morning was kind of kind of funny because he was interviewing this man who uh, had been recommended to him that could maybe help him. Uh, control his hoarding or clean up. It was a disaster master, I think was the name of the business. And so he's interviewing him. He's talking to him and uh, he asks if he can go along on one of his jobs. So, you know, he kind of wants to see how he handles things and all that. So he puts on a mask and he's right in there helping, you know, and getting rid of stuff until they get to the man's books. And so he kind of starts looking at the books and, you know, so, sort of admiring his collection and he's thinking, Ooh, I wonder if he's going to get rid of those. <laughs> so yeah, I knew it. The minute that the man said, yeah, some of those can go. Then <laughs> Barry is like, Oh, I'll take care of that. Well, of course he takes the books and heads out to his car with them. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, I think it's kind of dangerous to send a hoarder on another hoarding job because, you know, they're just going to end up falling back into, <laughs> you know, bad habits. Uh, although, um, it sounds kind of tempting. <laughs> I don't know. It's just funny to think about. Um, but as a potential hoarder myself, um, I, I'm definitely a clutter bug. I <clears throat> would say that it's, I know that there's certain situations that I shouldn't put myself in because it's just going to be too tempting. That's part of the reason that I wanted to stop being the bookshelf chairman at our public library, because I had a really hard time getting rid of the books that even needed to be gotten rid of. Now, if, if a book is moldy, I can throw it away. But if it's 
just well read and a little bit banged up, I'm not going to put it in the trash. I'm going to donate it. I'm going to put it in a little free library, something like that. So, you know, there's a fine line somewhere. And it just got to where when I was doing it, I was just overburdened with other people's cast offs and I needed to get out from under that. So that's part of the reason I don't do it anymore. So anyway, I got off on a serious tangent, but it kind of relates back to uh, mess. I have about four hours left in real time. I decided to go ahead and speed it up a little bit. So I might be able to finish this today if I'm, uh, you know, doing it between two and three hours uh, in actual time. So I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Now, I realized last week when I was re-watching my Friday Reads before I uploaded it that I told you then I had nine books that I was currently reading, four audio, four print, and one book on my Kindle, or one ebook, and I forgot to tell you about the Kindle book. And it's actually not a Kindle book. Um, I'm well, I'm reading it on my Kindle, but it's uh, it's a Hoopla ebook, and uh, and it's also on decluttering. I find that the beginning of the year is a really good time to um, to kind of jump start. I don't know if you can see that. If I tap on it to make it bigger, it's just going to go to where I am in the book. It's called Declutter for Good, Share Your Stuff and Reclaim Your Life by Mary Ann Peters. I, let me see if you can see that. I don't know if you can see that or not. Anyway, um, this is a, a short little ebook. Uh, I'm about 20% in. And I like the direction that this is going because I think when people try to help other people get rid of their stuff and declutter. I know I watch these hoarding shows and all that, and, you know, a lot of times people are just saying, just get rid of it, just throw it away. Well, that's part of the battle, because those of us who struggle with saving too much don't want to see things go to waste. And her, um, I think her main thing here is that she's helping people find new homes for their things, so that... Um, they can be recycled or reused or or something. And I think that's very important to not just add to the landfill if we can help it. I mean, use it up. Use it until it absolutely has no more uses and then put it in the landfill. That's my philosophy. So I have a really hard time with people saying, just throw it out, just throw it away. No, donate it, recycle it, reuse it into something if you can at all. And here in our household, um, we recycle everything possible. Um, my husband is even better at it than me. I mean, he got us to, you know, when we first got married uh, and we started, you know, recycling paper, we have a separate paper for tra uh, for. Uh, paper. We have. I'm sorry. We have a separate trash can for paper in our kitchen, right next to the actual trash can. So it's very convenient to throw away paper, and we just put it right in that separate can, and then I bag it up, and it goes out with the recycle. Um, but he even has us take out the little plastic parts of envelopes, you know, and recycle the envelope. Now, I think some of those little glassine envelopes are recyclable, but I don't know one from another. So we just tear out the tear out the plastic, recycle the envelope, and off it goes. So that's just my little aside for, for decluttering and recycling and all that kind of stuff. So um, as far as reading, I still have... Um, three of my print books that I'm in the uh, Under the Mistletoe by, um, well, the second book is by Anita Higman. It's called Once Upon a Christmas Eve. I have barely started that. Uh, I also already mentioned the gift. And then uh, here, Jen from Remembered Reads, his A Very Dairy Christmas by Sylvia Heisen. Um, and when I finish this, Jen, I've got uh, more cow books, at least one more I can think of right away that I'm going to read in 2018. So uh, I'll drag it out and show you another cow book when I get done with that one. Okay, so um, audiobooks. I'm probably not going to start the second Kingdom Keepers book before um, February, and I had hoped I could go ahead and get started on Their Eyes Were Watching God, but um, I want to just focus on what I currently have. I need to catch up a little bit with Lonesome Dove. I'm in this last week. I got going on the cutting season, which I told you about. I finished it, but then I was behind on Lonesome Dove. So I caught up and got last week's section done, and now I'm in the middle of this week's section. So I want to finish Mess. 
and uh, catch up with Lonesome Dove. And then it seems like I have one other audiobook. Oh, A Wrinkle in Time. I need to finish that. I'm about half done. And um, I had just laid it aside for the time being. I haven't made any progress on it. So I think I can get all those done before the end of the month. And I think we have five days left, right? And then it'll be February. <laughs> so um, that's all I have for this video. I will probably be back today with another video. I um, have been really hard, working hard getting my uh, 20 by 20 challenge, which is my own personal reading challenge that I'm going to be doing for the next three years. And uh, I'm ready to reveal that. So I want to tell you a little bit about what I did for my Project 17 and 17. Then I'll move into my 20 by 20. I also went to two library book sales last weekend, and I'll have a book haul coming up. So that's all I have for this video. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book, and God bless you.